A very good evening aspirants welcome to Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar Ayes Academy for the date 6th of August 2022 displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today without any delay let's get into the article discussion See this editorial here it talks about two things one is ondc and the other one is odr the article first talks about the need for ondc which is nothing but open network for digital commerce and then the editorial talks about the advantages associated with the odr which is nothing but online dispute resolution now some of you might find these two abbreviations strange but no worries in this discussion i'll explain everything now without wasting much time let's start the discussion before going into the discussion i have displayed the syllabus relevant to the article you can take a look at it now first of all let us take a look at ondc as i already mentioned ondc is open network for digital commerce see currently how do you shop online you log into your amazon or flipkart account and you look for the product and you place the order right and this present system is disadvantages for us as buyers and it is not much beneficial for small sellers also first let us take the issue faced by us buyers majority of us when we decide to buy something online we get into an e-commerce site and we place the order we do not check the price of the same product on multiple platforms right and even if we do that we fail to compare the prices of the product in the e-commerce sites and the local shops and due to this we might end up buying the product at a higher price and this is the major issue faced by us buyers now let us see the issue faced by small sellers see india is currently going through a digital revolution due to the increased smartphone penetration and access to cheap data and all the larger enterprises have gained from this digital revolution see most of the unicorn companies in india that is the companies with 1 billion dollar valuation have used this digital revolution see the section which the revolution has not touched is the small enterprises local kirana shops and the local grocery shops now you have to think why are these small shops not participating in the e-commerce platforms like amazon or flipkart see this is because to participate in the e-commerce platform the small shops have to maintain separate infrastructures and this will reduce their profit margin so it is only the big players who are benefiting from this digital revolution and it is mainly to address these two issues the department for promotion of industry and internal trade established the open network for digital commerce see it is a non-profit company the existing e-commerce giants and the local shops can participate with the ondc platform and once they participate the ondc website will display the products and the services from all the participating e-commerce platforms so what is the benefit for the small sellers here this will help create a level playing field for the small and medium enterprises i'll explain with an example about how the ondc will work let us say that ondc is launched and all the major e-commerce companies are participating in it now you are planning to buy the latest edition of lakshmikanth book and if you go to ondc platform and search for the book the network will display book and the price is quoted by various participating e-commerce platforms here the advantage for the buyer is you can search for the lowest cost and buy the book at the cheapest price See here the government says ONDC will help to end the predatory pricing especially those are sold at high margin so with the ONDC platform buyers will be better informed about the price now moving to the seller side of things the advantage for the small businesses they can quote the lowest price and compete with the big e-commerce firms so as i said ONDC will create a level playing field and it will bring the small businesses out of the digital vacuum see the government estimates that india's e-commerce market was worth more than 55 billion dollars in gross merchandise value in 2021 this will grow to 350 billion dollars by 
Currently, Amazon and Walmart's Flipkart control more than 60% of the market. So, the introduction of ONDC will lead to the democratization of nation's online market by the inclusion of small players in the digital revolution. And finally, ONDC will help increase the competition. And the competition in turn will lead to innovation. So, these are the things about open network for digital commerce. Now, let us move on to see about ODR that is Online Dispute Resolution. See, the name itself is self-explanatory. ODR uses technology to resolve disputes between the parties. ODR mainly uses mediation, conciliation and arbitration to resolve disputes online. But here you have to note that ODR is not limited to just mediation, conciliation and arbitration. It can use other innovative methods as well to resolve the dispute. You have to know that ODR is not a new concept. The e-commerce platform launched its ODR in the year 1999 itself. As of 2010, eBay was handling over 60 million disputes per year through its ODR platform. Even in India, this mode of dispute resolution is in use. In the year 2020, Niti Ayog established a committee under the chairmanship of retired Justice A.K. Sikri. And the main objective of the committee was to explore the uses of ODR. See, various Indian firms have also resorted to ODR to manage the disputes. And I have also displayed some of the popular ones here. Just pause the video, go through this and take note of it. You may expect a prelims question regarding this. They will give the name of the ODR platform and in the options, you will have a variety of fields. You have to identify that it is a ODR platform, which is nothing but online dispute resolution platform. So pause the video and go through all of these names. I'll just read out the names for you. SEBI Scores, RBI CMS, Maharera, MSME Samadhan, RTI Online. Now having understood the basics of the online dispute resolution, let us see the need and the importance of it. To understand the need for ODR in e-commerce, now we are going to put our imagination hats on. Let us consider any e-commerce site to a big mall where you go and purchase things. Since ONDC will have many e-commerce firms participating in its platform, ONDC is a big mall inside which many malls will be there. And the malls inside the big mall are the e-commerce firms that are participating in ONDC. So this big ONDC mall will have a lot of customers, right? And there will be constant interaction between sellers and the buyers. And this is bound to cause problems here and there. Here the dispute might arise between two sellers or between a buyer and a seller. Only when these disputes are cleared with ease, the mall will function properly, right? And this is where ODR comes in. See, ODR acts as the mall management that resolves the dispute. So what did we understand from this? We understood that it is natural for disputes to arise when people interact. So resolving disputes in a faster manner and with ease will help in the proper functioning of a system as a whole. Now these are the needs of ODR. Now let us see the advantages. First of all, ODR is quick and the problems are resolved in a time-bound manner. See, it is affordable and cheap to access. It is easily enforceable. See, it is easily enforceable because ODR can be designed by keeping the participants in mind. Since ODR is tailor-made for the participants, it is easily enforceable. The next major advantage is it is easily adoptable. See, this is because ODR can be easily integrated into the already existing system. See, I've already mentioned about the eBay, right? eBay easily integrated its ODR component with its existing website. The next advantage is it ensures 24-7 accessibility even from the remotest regions. This is because all the process happens online. So it is accessible 24-7. Now apart from this, ODR can also use technological innovation like artificial intelligence, machine learning to resolve disputes in a smooth manner. See for the businesses, ODR will ensure more business activities. How is this possible? See this is because a positive dispute resolution experience will ensure happy customers. And happy customers will buy more products. 
So this is how it ensures more business activities for the businesses. Now coming to the final advantage, see with ODR, the burden that happens in our judicial system can be reduced. See this is because many of the small and petty cases can be resolved using ODR and only the serious ones will reach the court system. This will help reduce the backlogs that are faced by our judicial system. Now that's all about this editorial given here. In this discussion, we saw about ONDC, which is Online Network for Digital Commerce. And we saw about ODR, Online Dispute Resolution. Now with these key takeaway points, let us move on to the next article discussion. Now have a look at this news article. It is about the demand to name state as Tamil Nadu. See, a souvenir was released by Tamil Nadu government on July 18. And this day was observed as Tamil Nadu Day. This is because on this day, the resolution to rename the state as Tamil Nadu was passed in the year 1967. And additionally, the souvenir holds information on the demand towards linguistic reorganization of states and the renaming of Madras Presidency to Tamil Nadu. For example, the souvenir talks about the sacrifice of Shankaralinganar who fasted to death in 1956. This is because of the demand to rename the state as Tamil Nadu. And also the souvenir has essays by different personalities exploring the idea of Tamil identity and culture. And this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, we are going to learn about the provisions of Indian constitution which is about the state formation and renaming of state. First of all, let us start with article 2. See, this article talks mainly about the admission or the establishment of new states. It also states that parliament may by law admit into the union or it can establish new states. The crucial point to be noted here is that the word state here does not mean union territory. Now with this information, let us move on to article 3. See, it talks about two parts. The first one is formation of new states and the second one is about the alteration of areas, boundaries or names of the existing states. So this article contains two parts. Now under first part, the article says that parliament may by law can form a new state and this can be done by separation of a territory from any state or by uniting two or more states or parts of states or by uniting any territory to a part of any state. So these are the ways through which a new state can be formed. Now coming to the second part which includes alteration of name boundaries and areas of the existing states. Under this part, the article says that parliament may by law can increase the area of any state, can also diminish the area of any state, can alter the boundaries of any state and it can even alter the name of any state. And again, here also there is a crucial point. In this article, that is article 3, the word state includes union territory also. So what we saw under article 2, the word state under article 2 does not include union territory, but the word state under article 3 includes union territory. And additional information that you have to remember while remembering these two articles are, see, the bills for the purpose mentioned in article 3 can be introduced in either house of the parliament on the recommendation of president. So here, prior recommendation by the president is needed and it can be introduced in either house of the parliament. Now secondly, the bills that affects the areas, boundaries or names of any of the states should be referred by the president to the state legislature. Here, state legislature, they can express their views within such period as the president may allow. But then, there is no compulsion for the president to follow the views expressed by the state legislatures. So these are the important points that you have to remember regarding Article 2 and Article 3. Now coming to article 4, see this is not a separate article, this also talks about article 2 and 3. This article says that the laws made under articles 2 and 3 provides for the amendment of first and fourth schedules. Do you remember what are the first and fourth schedules? Yes, you are right. The first schedule talks about the names of states and union territories. And the fourth schedule, it talks about the provisions in relation to allocation of seats for states and union territories in Rajya Sabha. And article 4 also mentions that 
no such law made under article 2 and 3 shall be deemed to be an amendment of this constitution for the purposes of article 368 try to remember what is article 368 if you know what it is post your answer in the comment section now moving on see i have given you here the table of the states formed after 1956 with the years on which they are formed so please go through it i'll also read it once See in the year 1960 Maharashtra and Gujarat were formed 1963 Nagaland 1966 Haryana and Punjab 1971 Himachal Pradesh 72 Manipur Tripura and Meghalaya 1975 Sikkim 87 Mizoram Arunachal Pradesh Goa 2000 Chhattisgarh Uttarakhand Jharkhand 2014 Telangana So you also go through it again and try to remember it what if a statement is asked in the prelims giving the year on which a state is formed you have to know whether it is right or not so go through this table and with this we have come to the end of the discussion with these points in mind let us move on to the next article discussion see this article here it is a business page article see to understand this article we have to understand two basic economic terms one is the repo rate the other one is credit of take First of all let us take repo rate repo rate in simple words is nothing but the rate at which commercial banks borrow money from RBI here how the borrowing happens is important see repo is the short form for repurchase agreement during repo operation commercial banks give their government securities to RBI with the promise of buying them back and the RBI provides money to the commercial banks so this is the repo operation basically a repo instrument is used to address the short term liquidity needs of commercial banks here from prelims perspective you have to note some points first is the commercial banks cannot use the government securities that are held as part of slr to get into a repo agreement with rbi here slr means statutory liquidity ratio go and read what slr means and the second one is the repo instrument can be used to raise the short term funds by commercial banks regional rural banks cooperative banks state and central government and non banking financial companies and thirdly if the rbi increases repo rate banks will find it costly to get the funds from rbi so the banks in turn increase the rate at which they lend money to the customers and this will bring down the money supply in the economy thereby controlling inflation so these are the three points that you have to remember regarding repo agreement what are they commercial banks cannot use government securities that are held as a part of slr to get repo agreement repo instrument can be used by commercial banks rrbs cooperative banks state central government and nbfcs and thirdly if rbi increases the repo rate banks will find it costly to get funds from rbi and banks in turn will increase the rate at which they lend money to the customers and this brings down the liquidity in the economy and it controls inflation now moving on to credit of take what is meant by credit credit is nothing but borrowing or taking loan and credit of take is nothing but growth in loan or increase in borrowing see credit of take normally occurs when the economy witnesses growth and when the banks have the access to liquidity now having understood the basic terms now let us see about the news article see the news article says that rbi increased the repo rate so banks in turn they are increasing the rate at which they lend to the customers while talking about the credit of take i mentioned that it happens when the economy is growing and when banks have sufficient liquidity see what is the present condition in our country presently our economy is bouncing back so the demand for loans is increasing but due to increase in repo rate and the associated increase in the lending rate in banks people are finding it difficult to get loans here banks mentioned that they are increasing the interest rate due to increase in the repo rate but the rbi governor he mentioned that banks for their liquidity they should not just depend on the repo instrument of rbi they also have to take steps to mobilize more funds by customer deposit to fund the credit of take 
So as the RBI says, if the banks mobilize more funds by customer deposits, they can lend at a lower interest rate even after increase in repo rate. So this will help to easily fund the credit offtake. And this is about the news article given here. So I hope here you are able to understand the relation between credit offtake and the repo rate that is given in the article. Now that's all about this news article discussion. With these points in mind, let us move on to the next article discussion. Now have a look at this news article. This news article talks about Israel's strikes on Gaza. See, Israel unleashed a wave of air strikes in Gaza on Friday. This killed at least 10 people. Now here, let us not get deep into the issue. Instead, let us learn about the geographical location of Israel and its significance. First of all, let us start with the geographical location of Israel. See, it is a small country with a relatively diverse topography. It consists of a lengthy coastal plain, highlands in the north and central regions, the Negev desert in the south, and the Great Rift Valley which runs the length of the country from north to south along its eastern border. And this valley is also called as Jordan Rift Valley. Now talking about the political position of it, Israel is a country in the Middle East. It is located in the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea. It is bounded to the north by Lebanon, to the northeast by Syria, to the east and southeast by Jordan, and to the southwest by Egypt, and to the west by Mediterranean Sea. See, Jerusalem is the seat of the government and the proclaimed capital. Now with this information, let us see some of the geographical significances. See, the Great Rift Valley is a long fissure in the Earth's crest. And the Jordan River makes part of the frontier between Israel and Jordan. It flows southward through the rift. And finally, it enters into highly saline Dead Sea. Now talking about Dead Sea, it is the lowest point of the natural landscape feature on Earth's surface. See, south of the Dead Sea, the Jordan continues through the rift and where it forms the Arava Valley. And then let's talk about the desert. See, it is the sparsely populated region that comprises the southern half of Israel. And towards south, it becomes increasingly arid and it breaks into sandstone hills cut by vadis, canyons and cliffs. Now the next prominent feature is Golan Heights. See Golan Heights is a rocky plateau on the border between Israel and Syria. It is important to Israel because it gives an excellent point for monitoring Syrian movements. Then the topography provides a natural buffer against any military adventure from Syria. And also note that this Golan Heights is a key source of water for an arid region which is most of Israel. See, rainwater from Golan's catchment feeds into the Jordan River and the area provides one third of Israel's water supply. In Golan Heights, the land is fertile and the volcanic soil is used to cultivate vineyards and orchards and rice cattle. The Golan is also home to Israel's only ski resort. And just know that Israel and Syria are in a dispute for this piece of land and the US was the first country to recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. But the rest of the international community regards it as Israeli occupied region. Now that's all about this article. With these key learned points, let us move on to the next article discussion. Have a look at this news article. See, it is about the privileges of members of parliament. Rajya Sabha Chairman Mr. Vengaya Naidu said that members of the House do not have a privilege from action by investigating agencies while the session is on. It means that the members do not have any privilege from action against Enforcement Directorate, Central Bureau of Investigation that is CBI and the Income Tax Department. And this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us learn about the parliamentary privileges of members of parliament. And then let us see the clarification given by the chairman of Rajya Sabha. See, when we talk about the privileges, the first thing that comes to our mind is Article 105 of Indian Constitution. We all know Article 105 talks about the powers, privileges of houses of parliament and of the members and the committees. See, firstly, it gives the freedom of speech in parliament. 
and secondly no member of parliament shall be liable to any proceedings in any court and this is with respect to anything said by the member or the oath given by them in the parliament or in any committee and there is also one more privilege no person shall be liable in respect of publication under the authority of either house of the parliament it may be a publication of any report paper oaths or proceedings of the house okay so these are the privileges mentioned in article 105 The important thing to be noted here is that this is applicable to persons who have the right to speak or take part in the proceedings of either houses of the parliament or any of the committee. So from this we know that article 105 of the constitution gives MP certain privileges. See these privileges are given so that the members can perform their parliamentary duties without any hindrance. And then in addition to this there is also one more privilege. See there is a prohibition on courts to enquire into the proceedings of the parliament and this is provided by article 122 of Indian constitution now let us take another article which is regarding privileges or providing immunity to the members of parliament that article is nothing but article 361a see it provides immunity to a person from any proceedings such as civil proceedings or criminal proceedings in any court in respect of publication in a newspaper or a substantially true report of the proceedings of the either houses of parliament see this privilege is applicable if the publication is not made with malice or to harm someone So what does this mean it means that if publication is made to harm someone else then the member is subjected to civil proceedings or criminal proceedings if it is not made in that sense then the members of the parliament have immunity to it see this immunity is also available in relation to reports or matters broadcasted by means of wireless telegraphy so that's all about this article 361a Now let us see one more privilege mentioned outside of Indian constitution. So what does this mean? This means that not just constitution, other provisions also provide privilege to the members of the parliament. So in prelims if a statement is asked like privileges to the members of the parliament is given only in Indian constitution then that statement is incorrect. Now coming back to the privilege that is mentioned outside of the Indian constitution See it is in section 135A of Civil Procedure Code. See section 135A of the Code of Civil Procedure of 1908 talks about the exemption of members of legislative bodies from arrest and detention. And note that this privilege from arrest and detention is under civil process only. So what does this mean? In simple words, a member of parliament cannot be arrested in a civil case 40 days before the commencement of the session or committee meeting and 40 days after. See, this is the privilege that is incorporated under section 135A. And note that this privilege is given to a member of either house of the parliament or legislative assembly or legislative council of a state or a member of any committee of legislature. but however in criminal matters mps are not on a different footing than a common man it means that an mp does not enjoy any immunity from being arrested in a criminal case during the session or otherwise and also note that the person released from detention will be liable to rearrest and to further detention so based on this only in today's news article chairman of rajya sabha clearly said that an mp can only inform that the house is in session and he can seek another date from the investigating agencies it means that he or she cannot avoid the enforcement agencies or their summons or their notices now that's all about this discussion here in this discussion we saw about article 105 and article 122 and article 361a of the indian constitution and we also saw section 135a of the civil procedure code of 1908 now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion today we have four questions and one of them is a quiz question for you Now let's solve the first question. Consider the following statements. Goa was made as a state in the year 1962. See this statement is incorrect. Goa was made as an union territory in the year 1962 and it was made as a state in the year 1987 only. 
so if you know that statement one is incorrect you can eliminate two options that is option b and d and if you see in the leftover options we have statement 3 in both of them so we have to check only statement 2 and find out whether it is correct or not statement 2 misoram and arunachal pradesh were given statehood in the year 1972 See statement 2 it is also incorrect because Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh and Goa they were given statehood in the year 1987. See Manipur, Tripura and Meghalaya were only given statehood in the year 1972. So from this we can easily conclude that the correct answer here is option A 3 only. Now moving on to the next question which among the following are the steps taken by RBI to control inflation? Increasing SLR Statement 2. Selling government securities in open market. Statement 3. Increasing margin requirements. And Statement 4. Increasing taxes. See, Statement 1. It is correct. When SLR is increased, bank have to invest more in the government securities. And this reduces their ability to lend money to the customers and thus reducing the money supply in the economy. And the ultimate consequence of it is reduction in inflation. So, statement 1 is correct. Now, statement 2, which says selling government securities in open market. See, this is also true because when RBI sells government securities in open market, excess liquidity in the economy is absorbed and this brings down the inflation. See, when RBI sells the government securities, what the buying person will do? The buying person will pay money to the RBI. So, this reduces the money supply in the economy. Now, coming to the third statement, increasing the margin requirements. See, this statement is also correct. See, SLR, CRR, REPO and other policy rate control comes under the quantitative monetary policy measures of RBI. Now, adjusting margin requirements comes under the qualitative monetary policy measures. Here, margin requirement is nothing but the amount of security that one must maintain to get loans. When the margin requirement is increased, it becomes difficult to get loans. And this again will bring down the inflation. So, statement 3 is also correct. Now, the fourth statement is increasing taxes. See, increasing taxes will bring down the money supply because the citizens of India will pay more money as tax to the government. So, money is getting absorbed from the economy. It will bring down the inflation, but it is not a measure taken by the RBI. Instead, it is done by the government and it comes under the fiscal policy. So, what has the question asked? The question has asked to identify the steps taken by RBI to control inflation. So, statement 1, 2, 3, these are the steps taken by RBI to control inflation. And the statement 4, it comes under fiscal policy measures by government to control inflation. So, the correct answer here is option A, 1, 2, 3, only. Now, moving on to the next question, which among the following countries are not landlocked countries? You all know what a landlocked country is, right? It is covered on all sides by land. So, what are the countries given here? Jordan, Afghanistan, Israel and Iran. Look at this map here. First, let us take Jordan. See here, a tiny part of Jordan is connected to Red Sea via Gulf of Aqaba. So here, Jordan is not a landlocked country. Now the second one is Afghanistan. Afghanistan is clearly a landlocked country. So what did we find out? We found out that Jordan is not a landlocked country and Afghanistan is a landlocked country. So, from this we will see whether we are able to arrive at the right answer or not. In the options, statement 2 should not be there because Afghanistan is a landlocked country and the question has asked for the countries which are not landlocked. So, statement 2 should not be there in the option. Which option does not have statement 2 in it? It is option D, 1, 3 and 4 only. Additionally, we will also see about statement 3 and 4. In this map, see Israel. See, one side of Israel is bordered with Mediterranean Sea and hence it is not a landlocked country. What is the other country? It is Iran. See, Iran is one of the Gulf countries. On the one side, it is bordered with Persian Gulf. So, it is also not a landlocked country. Now, moving on to the final question. 
Consider the following statements. Statement 1. Breach of privileges is punishable under law of parliament. Statement 2. Member of Lok Sabha cannot be arrested in any case when parliament is in session. Think about our discussion for a minute. Try to attempt this question and post your answer in the comment section. I have displayed here a main question for your practice. So interested aspirants write it and post it in the comment section and if you have any queries related to the articles that we discussed today post that also in the comment section and don't forget about the quiz question and during the discussion I asked you to see about an article right it is article 368 if you find out what that article is regarding post that also in the comment section and with this we have come to the end if you find the video useful like, share and comment and do subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy's YouTube channel for further updates. Thank you.